today for, besides those who are here to be confirmed and received, Edward Thomas Demby and Henry Beard Delaney. Both of these men were the first and second African-American bishops consecrated in the Episcopal Church, um, which is why the prayers that we prayed about serving faithfully, though limited by segregation. I don't know very much at all about Henry, Beard, Henry Thomas Demby, but I do about Henry Beard Delaney because I, my wife and I knew his great niece uh, and who was a parishioner in Philadelphia. And you may know of Henry Beard Delaney because of a book written by his two daughters called Having Our Say by the Delaney sisters um, who told in a way that was both humorous, touching, and riveting about what it meant to grow up in the home of in South, rural South Carolina in the midst of segregation. Um, this man who was first a priest and then a bishop. What catches my eye is the prayer that is offered because of their witness. And it goes like this, assist us we pray to break through the limitations of our own time that we may minister in obedience to Jesus Christ. That, it seems to me, allows us to think more personally about their life and witness as it relates to us. And as I try to think about that, especially as it applies to the scripture, it has to do with having a certain level of courage and a certain level of inner integrity that allows you to step into those places where there in fact could be opposition. I don't know about you, but when I think about that, at least in my life, it, it takes me straight to the Thessalonian lesson, where Paul writes that he declared the gospel in spite of great opposition and said, our appeal does not spring for deceit or impure motives, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message, even so we speak not to please mortals, other people, but to please God. In other words, the, the crux of the matter, the capacity to be able to speak in a way that is courageous in the midst of your own time, despite the limitations, has everything to do with the kind of inner conviction that says, I'm here to speak because I have, in fact, been approved by God, which means I know that I've been accepted by Him. I am the object of His mercy. I'm not trying to prove myself. In fact, just the opposite. I have received from God that the inner working of His Holy Spirit that gives me the power to be able to speak with that kind of clarity. Now, what's the downside? The downside is, is that in the midst of having this great treasure that Paul describes, the very work of God in our midst, it doesn't necessarily in and of itself automatically free us from the need to be liked by other people. And that's why he goes on to say, describing something that we're just trying to understand. As you know, and God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with a pretext for greed, meaning if I say the right thing, that means you'll give me what I want. Um, nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others. In other words, the glory of this is, is that God can work in our lives the kind of inner clarity that allows us to say who has first place. God does. And therefore, it is my desire to please Him, regardless of whether I gain the approval of other people or not. Because if you see, if I'm still playing in that playground of the desire to please other people, I will inevitably resort to the kind of strategies that says we don't want anything to do with this, which is flattery, let me shape it in such a way so that you'll like me, or saying something in a way that would result in other people giving me what we want. 
That's a strategy that a lot of people try out. You know, if I shape, say it a certain way, then they're going to like me and then they'll do what I, that's, that's classic office politics. That's how a lot of our society, in fact, runs and operates. Shape the message according to the audience who's in front of you. Hmm. Paul is describing something very different. He's describing, number one, a deep security in Christ mm. that allows us to be who he is making us, regardless of who we're with. We're not playing to an audience. He's describing a kind of interior confidence that says, because I have been entrusted by God, with this great treasure. My responsibility before him is to be faithful to him even if it gets me in trouble with people because he is my audience, not the people who I can see with the natural eye. And therefore, by God's mercy, what an insult it would be to God for me to take what has been given and then use it as a way to get what I want. To get what I need. But as all of us have the need to be liked, God has to work something deep in us so that our love for Him and the knowledge of His love for us literally eclipses any other loves and loyalties. Not that we don't love people. Just the opposite, the passage goes on to say, we were servants and shared with you not only uh, the message, but our very lives because you were so dear to us. I mean, the wonderful paradox is, the more we live into who we are in Christ and speaking out for what it is that he has given us, the more, in fact, God enlarges our hearts and gives us a deep love for other people, a love that goes beyond just helping you feel better. But a love that is deeply committed to sharing with you the very best. So that even the courage to speak as God gives us the words is in fact motivated by a deep love that we have for others. Therefore, because we hold them in such high esteem, we will not resort to flattery. <coughs> Shading the truth because it, in fact, dishonors who they are. Hmm. So that's the arena in which we are invited to live, as believing Christians. Living with that kind of deep security that gives us the courage to speak with clarity, to live with a freedom that goes beyond the politics of trying to manipulate to get what I want. And in, fr and in fact, the freedom to deeply love and care because we are the objects of that deep care before God. That's what God, you see, is continually working in us. Are we there yet? No. <laughs> but to lay out clearly what God is at work doing gives us what we need to say, Lord, help me step more deeply into that. <clears throat> to live with that kind of grace, that kind of poise, that kind of clarity, that kind of deep honesty that arises out of both who we are as recipients of God's love and mercy and what God wants to do through us, which means sharing with that same kind of deep love and mercy. Otherwise, we'll never have the courage to be a Delaney or a Denby, much less a true us in terms of who God is making us. So may God help us to walk and to receive from God what we need to live with that kind of genuine, loving, and tender courage. Amen. Amen.